Have you ever wondered why rubies and sapphires, though similar, have different colors and prices? This question might seem trivial at first glance, but the answer lies deep within the heart of Earth's crust and the fascinating science of gemology. Rubies and sapphires, often seen as the crown jewels of nature's beauty, share a surprising amount of common ground. Both are varieties of the mineral corundum, a crystalline form of aluminum oxide, and are virtually identical in every aspect except for one crucial detail, their colour. The fiery red of a ruby and the cool hues of a sapphire are not just simple aesthetic differences. They are the result of intricate geological processes and a testament to nature's artistry. But why does this difference in colour translate into a difference in price? The answer will surprise you. So, Stay tuned as we dive into the fascinating world of these precious stones. To understand the colour difference, we need to delve into the science behind these gemstones. Now, this might surprise you, but rubies and sapphires are essentially the same stone. Yes, you heard it right. They both belong to the mineral species known as corundum, which is a crystalline form of aluminum oxide. Corundum, in its purest form, is colourless. So how do we get the vibrant red of a ruby or the cool blue of a sapphire? The answer lies in the role of tiny impurities or contaminants. When corundum is pure, it's a rather dull and uninteresting stone. But when nature introduces a few impurities into the mix, that's when the magic happens. The contaminants, which are nothing but trace elements, can change the color of corundum, transforming it from a plain colorless stone into a radiant gemstone that we treasure. So what gives a ruby its blood-red colour? It's chromium. Yes, the same element you find in your stainless steel kitchen appliances. Even a small amount of chromium, ranging from 1% to 5%, can cause a significant colour change. When chromium atoms replace some of the aluminum atoms in corundum, they absorb specific wavelengths of light, resulting in the red colour we associate with rubies. On the other hand, sapphires derive their colour from different elements. For instance, the classic blue sapphire gets its colour from both iron and titanium impurities. While sapphires can come in a range of colours, including pink and purple, it's important to note that if the chromium content is high enough to make the sapphire red, it is then classified as a ruby. So the next time you marvel at a ruby's fiery red, or a sapphire's cool blue, remember that it's all down to a bit of scientific alchemy involving corundum and a handful of contaminants. So, it's the tiny bit of chromium that makes all the difference. Let's focus on chromium, the game-changer in our ruby-sapphire puzzle. Chromium, a metallic element with atomic number 24, plays a significant role in the world of gemstones. It's the secret agent that slides into the structure of corundum, a mineral composed primarily of aluminum and oxygen, and transforms it into a vibrant, eye-catching ruby or a calm, soothing sapphire. Imagine chromium as an artist with a palette of colours. When this artist decides to paint with a light hand, adding just a touch of chromium to the corundum canvas, the result is a sapphire. Sapphire, often associated with hues of blue, can actually come in a range of colours, including pink or purple. This is all thanks to chromium's artistic touch. Now what happens when chromium turns up the intensity, splashing more colour onto the corundum canvas? When the chromium content in the corundum increases, usually between 1 to 5%, we get to witness a transformation. The corundum takes on a deep blood-red colour and voila, we have a ruby. To put it in perspective, imagine you're baking a cake. If you add a hint of cocoa powder, you'll get a light, fluffy vanilla chocolate marble cake. But if you pour in a generous amount of cocoa, you'll end up with a rich, decadent chocolate cake. In the same way, chromium acts as the cocoa powder in our gemstone recipe, determining whether we get a ruby or a sapphire. But why does chromium do this? It all comes down to the science of light absorption. Chromium ions absorb specific wavelengths of light, leaving only certain colours for our eyes to perceive. This selective absorption process is what gives rubies and sapphires their unique colours. So, the next time you marvel at a ruby's rich red or a sapphire's soothing blue, remember the role of chromium. It's the unseen artist, the secret ingredient, the decisive factor that transforms ordinary corundum into the magnificent gems we know and love. Isn't it amazing how such a small change can make such a big difference? Now that we've solved the colour mystery, let's talk about the price difference. 
Rubies and sapphires may be nearly identical in composition, but when it comes to their value, the picture changes dramatically. The factors that affect their prices are color, clarity, cut and carat weight, known as the four C's in the world of gemstones. Let's start with color. The most desirable ruby is a deep blood red with a hint of blue, known as pigeon's blood. Sapphires come in a rainbow of colors, but those with a rich, intense blue are the most coveted. The more vivid and pure the color, the higher the price tag. Next is clarity. Both rubies and sapphires are type 2 gemstones, which means they usually contain inclusions. However, a stone with fewer inclusions is considered more valuable. The cut of the stone also plays a significant role. A well-cut gemstone reflects light beautifully and showcases the stone's color to its best advantage. A poor cut, on the other hand, can diminish the stone's value. Then we have carat weight. Larger stones are rarer and therefore more expensive. But remember, it's the combination of all four C's that determines a gemstone's value. But there's more to it than just the four C's. The laws of supply and demand also come into play. Rubies, especially those of high quality, are rarer than sapphires. This scarcity drives up their price. On the other hand, sapphires are more abundant. But this doesn't mean they're cheap. A top quality blue sapphire can cost more than a mediocre ruby. And let's not forget about the rare pink orange sapphire, the Pad Paradsha, which is one of the most expensive gemstones in the world. So, while they may look similar, rubies and sapphires are valued very differently. The magic of these gemstones lies not only in their captivating colours, but also in the intricate dance of factors that determine their worth. They truly are a testament to nature's ability to create beauty in the most unexpected ways. So, while they may look similar, rubies and sapphires are valued very differently. <laughs> Let's explore some fun facts and myths associated with rubies and sapphires. These gems, as splendid as they are, carry a wealth of interesting trivia and folklore, adding another layer of mystique to their allure. Firstly, did you know that the largest ruby ever discovered, the Rajaratna ruby, weighs a staggering 2,450 carats? That's about half a kilogram. Just imagine the sheer size of that gemstone. On the other hand, the largest sapphire, the Star of Adam, weighs a colossal 1,403 carats. Both these gems are truly monumental testaments to the wonders nature can create. Moving on to cultural significance in ancient times, rubies were believed to possess the power to predict danger. Warriors in Burma would embed rubies into their skin as they thought these gems would make them invincible. Sapphires, on the other hand, were seen as symbols of wisdom and royalty. In fact, they were often worn by medieval kings who believed that these gemstones would protect them from harm and envy. Now, let's delve into some myths. One popular myth about rubies is that they can boil water. While it's true that rubies can absorb heat, the idea that a ruby could generate enough heat to boil water is purely a myth. Similarly, there's a myth that sapphires can cure ailments. In the Middle Ages, people believed ground-up sapphires could cure all sorts of illnesses. Although a beautiful thought, there's no scientific evidence to support this belief. Finally, a fun fact. The ruby is the birthstone for July, symbolizing love and passion, while the sapphire is the birthstone for September, symbolizing wisdom and purity. So whether you're a passionate July baby or a wise September one, there's a gemstone that embodies your spirit. These gems are not just beautiful, but also rich in history and folklore. The world of rubies and sapphires is full of more such intriguing tales waiting to be discovered. We've journeyed through the world of rubies and sapphires, unraveling their secrets, We've explored their shared heritage, yet distinct identities. We've peeked into the science behind these gems, seeing how a mere 1 to 5% shift in chromium contaminants can create a color spectrum, from the deepest blood red to the softest hues of pink and purple. We've delved into the surprising price disparities between these stones, despite their similar origins and makeup, and we've also debunked some myths while sharing fun facts that only add to the allure of these precious gems. Our journey, though fascinating, only scratches the surface of the complex and intricate world of gemstones. There's so much more to discover, to understand and to appreciate. Thank you for joining us. Please like, subscribe and check out our other videos for more captivating content.